to First, welcome to Mayflower Congregational United Church of Christ. Where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are an open and affirming LGBTQAI affirming church in Sioux City, where we offer an extravagant welcome. It's right on the floor, Max, if you want to come to the sanctuary. We will begin this morning um, with some announcements, and quite a few. The first one is from the Sioux City Community Schools, and they they sent us a card today, uh, thanking us for our donation of hats and gloves, and they greatly appreciate it and all of the efforts that that, that all of our, your efforts do not go unseen. Part we got from them on our soccer two week program. Um, and this is from Bob, the prayer request. Pray for Karen Campbell Nelson, our global ministries mission co worker. She is serving with the Evangelical Christian Church of West Timor in Indonesia with rural populations there scattered over thousands of islands. They're experiencing the crippling impact of COVID since there's limited access to vaccines. On top of that, a cyclone last year left the church and homes, buildings damaged and destroyed. The emergency response team from that evangelical church denomination provided some assistance to congregations in their remote areas. So definitely keep them in our thoughts and prayers. And then the prayers, I don't know if I'm mispronouncing this name, Katie, uh, we need to pray for her trip to Africa, and Evelyn has a test tomorrow, to turn our prayers, and Lorena for her unborn baby, other announcements. Um, I am Pastor Jesse Lynn. I am the pastor of this church. Uh, Children's Sunday School is at 9.45 every Sunday. Our in-person and virtual worship is on Facebook on Sundays at 11. And the adult Zoom Bible study group uh, led by Bob meets at 2 p.m. on Zoom. And if you need more information about that, you can get in touch with Bob uh, Chris Meyer. Uh, some other prayer concerns. Um, we've had a couple of members of our congregation that tested positive for COVID. Um, Conrad uh, was uh, diagnosed either Tuesday or Wednesday. He is at home recovering. And we need to keep him in our prayers. Lucinda tested negative, so it was just a comment. And then um, Thursday, uh, Kathy, who normally plays the piano for us, has tested. Violin. What did I just say? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Violin <laughs> tested uh, positive for COVID. Um, we were all fairly, we, we were in a group of <laughs> theology. Of course, plus theology is canceled, so we all had contact with one another. So I myself was also tested, and I tested negative. Thank goodness, why do we be here? Um, so Kathy, Conrad, uh, keep in our prayers. Uh, Raymond, we we're glad to, to have him back. He has just recovered, and uh, yeah, yes, bless him. Prayers. 
Yes, thank you.
I'm going to uh, ask you a question. You probably aren't going to know this, but I'm sure uh, older folks in the audience will know, possibly. They did it white. So let's have the audience uh, see if they can get it first, and if they can't figure it out, then I'll, I'll ask those in the audience. Well, you know what a clinker is? Tinker sat 
said, and her little tummy tinker sat on a clinker. And, um, and he says, Ma, Ma. And then uh, my mom says, uh, Poor little innocent guy. So the connection with that is Jesus in our scripture passage about the Beatitudes gives eight blessings. And he gives blessings to people that we wouldn't, for conditions that we wouldn't think would be blessed. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, and persecuted. And so it's hard for us to understand how can you be blessed when you're in, you know, that type of a situation. Um, so what do, you, what do you think about that? Would it be hard to be blessed? Think that you were blessed if you were down and out? Have you ever been down and out before? No? Okay. <laughs> confused. So let's say you're blessed when you're confused. Does that seem odd? Why would that seem odd? So, one way we could look at being blessed, why you would be blessed, you know, if you were sitting on a coal, like poor Tommy, poor little innocent guy, is that our bodies have a pain response. And yeah, we don't like things that are painful. But what would it be like if we did not recognize the pain? or we didn't have that pain response, we could, you know, it would be hard for us to recognize what's wrong, or we could in inevitably hurt ourselves and not even know it. So in some ways, the fact that God gave us a pain response to, to recognize that there are times when we are in pain is a blessing. But that's what we're going to continue to explore today, is these blessings that seems so um, unconventional for us. That's right. Gracious God, we thank you for the youth of this church. Uh, we ask that uh, you be with us and help us to continue to understand the many blessings in life that do not seem like blessings at all, but to know that uh, you are with us and in some way they are blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so there's candy there. You just have to open the lid and get it if you want. Go ahead. No problem. So for our special music... We have Tanner Crouch, uh, who will be playing the saxophone. He'll be doing On Eagle's Wings.
Our scripture reading for this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of Christ. Our congregation for the month of February will be beginning a visioning process where we will all sit together and discuss what the vision of our church will be as we move into the future during this uncertain time. We're looking at visioning meetings being planned uh, following the service in the West Parlor. I've begun this process of discernment and visioning for this congregation because we are truly living in an unprecedented time. And the church is changing at a very rapid rate due to the COVID pandemic. I know a lot of us are already talking about the post-pandemic church. However, the virus is still with us and continues to affect our everyday lives as well as the life of the church. I recently attended a clergy retreat in Newton, Iowa, uh, hosted by the Disciples of Christ, where other UCC pastors were also in attendance. During the conference, I listened to stories of other pastors from all four of the surrounding states, and they all affirmed pretty much the same thing, that the change has been rapid and is still ongoing. Even when the pandemic does eventually end, the changes that have happened during COVID will still be with us and will have made an impact, a pretty dramatic one, upon us. Church. I think it's important that uh, we as a church discuss this and think about where it is that we will be go moving forward as we move into uh, this future. A future that nobody uh, really knows. There are some hints. I don't even know myself. But one of the first steps the church can do when they begin a visioning process is to think about their mission statement. And that's why I included it at the beginning of our worship service. And we'll include it throughout the month of February. This morning we'll be looking at Jesus' mission statement, which is the Beatitudes. And how we can embody those Beatitudes in our everyday lives as Christians. At the end of my message today, I would like to invite the congregation to think about how you would envision the blessed life that you are called to as Christians. What does the blessing mean to you? And how you embody it. And then I will ask for your feedback at the conclusion of my message. The Beatitudes are part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. They are the first set of five teachings that Jesus gave to his earliest followers. They are eight blessings that Jesus proclaims on people who would not have been considered blessed by the culture of their day nor our own. This, for me, is Jesus' inaugural address. If 
there is one passage of scripture that sums up all of Jesus' tradition. What is Jesus really all about? The Sermon on the Mount, and it begins with these Beatitudes. For me, and I'm sure for most Christians, this is the most central place. And it's interesting that uh, some Christians uh, in the past, at one point, thought it was the Ten Commandments that needed to be the most central teaching of the church. I'm sure we can all remember those stories on TV of should the Ten Commandments be placed on the courthouse steps or not. And I can remember uh, on one occasion watching the television set where the reporter asked the politician who was kind of supportive of the Ten Commandments being on the front of the courthouse steps, well, can you name all ten of the commandments? And he says, well, I'm not sure. I remember the one about adultery, though. <laughs> the word blessed has been transla it's translated into English from the Greek as makarios, which is tended to be translated as happy or fortunate. Now, my former professor in seminary, Dr. Mike Graves, and uh, his colleague, Dr. May, say in their commentary on Matthew that this is really a mistranslation. The better translation of makarios which takes into account its historical context, is esteemed or honored. The culture of that time was built around an honor-shame system. Those who had honor or who were esteemed were not the kinds of people that Jesus lists in the eight Beatitudes, according to that time. The poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, the hungry, those who thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, and those persecuted for righteousness. The honorable and the esteemed were those who had status or were in power, like the emperor or the king. Jesus is turning this whole concept of what it means to be blessed upside down on its head. In order to understand the full weight of what Jesus is implying, we have to go back to Jesus' earlier proclamation at the very beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, because it connects with what he's saying in these eight Beatitudes. So at the beginning of Matthew, in his first proclamation, Jesus says, From that time, Jesus says, From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come here. UCC pastor Dr. Eric Elvis points out that this too is an unfortunate mistranslation of the original Greek. He knows that the passage should read like this, the kingdom of heaven, in Matthew, or God, Mark, is already here. Change your whole way of thinking and believe in the good news. The word for repentance in Greek, which is metanoia, which means a complete and total reorientation towards life. And the Greek word for drawing near means that it's a past event that continues to have ongoing significance in the present. It's not a future event that hasn't happened yet. So when Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is theirs in the Beatitudes and then it is opening declaration says that it's going on right now, this causes us to have to completely reevaluate what heaven is, or at least this portion of heaven here on earth. You can kind of understand while some of his followers or people that were with him got a little upset possibly when he said this, because well, how can that be? There's still suffering, heartache, pain. Everything is in the world as it was before. The emperor is still in charge. But it connects with the Lord's Prayer. We make this proclamation every Sunday. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We tend to think of heaven as a place um, as an absence of suffering and pain. 
However, Jesus, it seems to me, is saying that heaven is discovered or found in the midst of pain, hardship, and suffering. During the retreat, uh, we watched a documentary called Justice for Brian Stevenson. It was an HBO documentary, and uh, it was part of our requirement to fulfill our anti-racism and pro-reconciliation class that we take every three years as ministers. And when I viewed the film with my minister colleagues, I felt that it really demonstrated what it looks like to embody the Beatitudes of Jesus. Brian Stevenson was an African-American defense lawyer who had been defending death penalty clients all the way up to the Supreme Court. In several of the cases that he argued at the Supreme Court had resulted in the death penalty being prohibited for youthful offenders as well as those who had severe learning or intellectual disabilities. Brian grew up in the segregated South. His first memories as a child were swimming in the community swimming pool, not knowing that's where he wasn't supposed to be. Seeing all of the adult white parents rushing to the pool to snatch their children out of the pool because they were in the same pool as an African-American child. And as he remembers this experience, he remembers an older white man standing over him saying, you're wrong, and it calls him the N-word. It was what happened towards the end of the film, though, that caught my attention. He had, had been defending a death row client that had severe mental and intellectual disabilities, and he was scheduled to be executed. The client appeared, appeals, the appeals had failed. He filed for consideration by the U.S. Supreme Court, and it was turned down. The client called in one last time, letting him know that he knew he was going to die, and began to cry. It was at this time Stevenson said, I can't do this anymore. But then after he thought about it for a bit, he realized, he came to the revelation that while the system is broken and his clients are broken, he could not stop doing the work that he was called to do. He identified with the client he realized that he was broken as well. He identified with the client and the problems of society in such a way that he knew he could not stop doing what God had called him to do. It was a part of who he was as a blessed child of God. I believe that what it looks like, this is what it looks like when you embody these beatitudes which were proclaimed by Jesus. Have you felt that same kind of blessing or identification with the less fortunate that you have encountered? Perhaps when you have worked with someone in need during one of our food shares or free rummages, this is what embodying the beatitudes means all of us are blessed during hard times, and God is found in the midst of our struggles. When we identify with that struggle and work alongside of others who are going through the same thing, God is found in the midst of that. This is where we find a blessed life. And now I would like for each of you to just take a few minutes and ponder the question I raised at the beginning of, of my message. How do you envision the blessed life that we are called to as Christians? And how do you or we embody it? And if you want to discuss this in a group or with your neighbor sitting around you, feel free to do so. But let's just take a couple of minutes and then we will uh, come back and uh, hear what your responses are.
anybody have anything they would like to share or feedback? <laughs> yes. Yeah.
gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day and for being with us and this church family as we have come through some really difficult times, times of change and pandemic. We ask that you continue to be with us as we discern the future of our church. But we know, God, that you are already active in and amongst us and in our communities. Just help us to see that acting that you're doing in your Holy Spirit. Lord, we lift up all of the healthcare workers who are tired and stressed from all of the work of dealt dealing with the pandemic. We ask that you be with them and give them encouragement, blessing that the life that the vocation that they are doing is modeling what you model to us through your Sermon on the Mount and those Beatitudes. The blessing of the poor in spirit. Lord, we lift up Michael, his wife, Trudy Cole, Karen. We lift up to you Conrad and Kathy, Sean, Heather, Galen. Lord, we lift up to you Linda. Had a pinched nerve from a fall. We ask that your peace and healing presence be with her as she recovers. Lord, we we just ask that you help to pull us all together because we all at times are broken and we need to remember that somehow in this brokenness, blessings are found. Now, in a moment of silence, I invite those who are with us today to say the names of those out loud that are in their prayers this day, either out loud or silently in their hearts. Kathy. Now let us pray together the prayer that you taught your earliest disciples to pray, whatever words are comfortable for you, by boldly saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors.
and then loop around to the side aisles. Then one other way we have of offering uh, for those who are joining us online or in the sanctuary is that on our website that is listed on the screen, we have a PayPal link and you can go and make uh, donations electronically there as well. Hear these words for the invitation to offering. God has led us to this place to heal and inspire us, to gently redirect us until we see the world as God does and love it with God's love. With our gifts, we affirm that God's generosity can make us all into a new creation by the way we give of ourselves. Let us begin this morning properly.
them. Go and teach. As you have been fed, go to feed the hungry. As you have been set free, go to set free the imprisoned. As you have heard proclaim, and the blessing which you have received from the Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be always with you. 